The green beans are coming in from the garden and it is time to get them preserved for long-term storage. And my favorite way to do this is pressure canning them. So I've got a handful. I wanna show you how to do this where it's manageable for you. Last year I would have really big bushels of green beans that I actually purchased from a local farm because I didn't grow enough. And it was an all day project to can them. It was actually a couple days project because I bought them a couple of different separate times. But what I'm gonna show you is when you don't have a huge bushel. I don't want you to think that you have to have this huge amount of whatever the crop is in order to preserve it. You can do it in small batches, which is what we're going to do today. So when you're pressure canning, which is what I am doing today, and I'm doing this according to the National Center for Home Pro Food Preservation Guidelines, which is for pints of green beans, I'm doing the hot pack, and I'll explain what that means. Um, it's uh, 20 minutes per pint and 25 minutes per quart. And so green beans is probably one of the easiest things to pressure can for real. Um, all I'm doing is snapping off some of the ends, right, from where it came from the plant. Uh, some people prefer to snap off the tail. I don't bother. And then I just break it in half. Uh, so I have a, a good piece to bite into when we're ready to eat these. I usually prefer to do these in quarts uh, because I find a quart to one quart is enough for a meal, right? For a family of four as a side dish. Um, occasionally I might do a quart and a pint, but I find that by canning these in the quart size, it's much more usable for our family. So consider that for yourself. Now when it's called the, the hot pack, what I'm doing is after these are broken up um, the way I want them. Bear with me, the kids are helping to do their chores, so the vacuum is going. Um, then I'm gonna load them into my quart jars. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in each jar. You, it's really up to your taste, but I would not go above a teaspoon. It's usually recommended for a half to a full teaspoon per quart. Um, certainly a quarter to a half per pint, a lot less per pint, right? Half that. Um, but once I have, these are all cleaned up, once I have them broken up the way I wanted, I'm gonna pack them into my jars, add a little bit of salt. Um, I have a tea kettle on the stove right now with some water. Uh, so I'm gonna put everything in the jar and then just fill it with the hot water to the appropriate head space. I think it's one inch. And then we put it in our canner and we bring it up to pressure and start the processing time. It is one of the easiest things for real. Um, and so by doing this in small batches, I find I'm not spending all day canning. I'm not in the kitchen all day. I can do other things and um, just allows me to live my life. I also actually, I learned this from my father-in-law, like to put a little vinegar in with my beans too. So just a little white vinegar. I'll put just a little bit in the jar. I do not do this for efficacy with safety. Um, because, I'm, because I'm pressure canning, uh, I'm already following the approved guidelines, the safe tested guidelines of pressuring at the appropriate um, poundage and time that uh, for my location and for what I'm doing, which again, 25 minutes for quarts, 20 minutes for pints. 10 pounds of pressure where I am at my elevation. Um, but again, I don't do the... Are you done? Yeah. Okay. Um, but I don't do the vinegar for, for efficacy with the safety. I do it because it actually tastes a little... It tastes good. I got that from my father-in-law. It tastes good. Uh, I'm going to put a little of that in as well. So my canner is on the stove. I think uh, I've got the water in it and I've got it heating to just a medium right now with the top off just to warm the water up. You never want to put really cold jars into really hot water, right? Because then you risk the breakage and the crackage. So I have two types of beans here. I didn't even talk about that. I've got... Um, the Blue Lake Bush Beans, which I love. I get these from Baker Creek. These are highly reliable, highly productive. And then I have Dragon Tongue Beans. 
which are also a bush bean and they've kind of got this variegated purple green um, they're both delicious i think they taste the same when cooked um, when they're eaten raw, I, I think they both taste amazing. I don't notice a huge taste difference. I think somebody actually asked about that, but they're both good. I often find that when I'm uh, at our homestead property harvesting these, and then I'm in the car on the way home, I've got my basket right here in the passenger seat next to me, and I'm often, <laughs> often snacking on the beans before I even get home, because they're just so good. So I'm putting them into just kind of like bite size pieces. It's really your preference, but you want to have them semi even pieces for cooking, even cooking. This is where I have inappropriately calculated. Uh, so I've got one, one quart here that's half full. So I'm going to transfer this to a pint. Uh, so I'll have two quarts and one pint to can. Now it's important that when you're pressure canning that you have a minimum of two quarts or four pints. You can't go ahead and process with one quart two pints, right? You have to have a minimum in the canner to really achieve that safe poundage of pressure. And that is either two quarts or four pints. Okay, so everything looks good. We're just gonna add our hot water. Got about an inch headspace here. I'm gonna wipe the rims, make sure there's no moisture or anything on the rim that would actually impede the seal from occurring. Add our lids. and our rings. Just be careful, especially with the hot water you've added, the jar is gonna be hot. I like to make sure I test the water in here as well before I put my jars in. Again, I just don't wanna have any breakage or crackage. Um, this water's pretty hot. I know that water's hot, so we're gonna go ahead and get these in. Because I have pints and quarts in here, I'm going to process at the quart time, which is 25 minutes. So keep that in mind. If you are mixing and matching with sizes, you always want to go with that higher time to get that correct, safe processing time. I turned my burner too high. The lid is on. Everything's locked in place. We're going to get everything boiling, start expelling some air for about 10 minutes, and then we'll start the processing time. But I'll come back and show you that. So do you hear this? This is a very steady stream of air coming out of the canner. And it's important that you let this happen for 10 minutes so that we don't have any air pockets down in the canner. 
but once this 10 minutes is up, we're gonna put the weighted gauge on. Okay, we've been venting for 10 minutes. I'm gonna put our weighted gauge on. Now where that altitude I'm at is 10 pounds pressure. And I've got my timer set for 25 minutes processing for the quart size. But remember, we're not actually starting the timer until we get to pressure. Once we get that jiggle, that means we're at the 10 pounds. It usually goes between 10 to 11, sometimes a little higher, but that basically means you're at that poundage once that jiggle starts, and that's right there where we start our 25 minute timer. I am going to slowly lower the temperature down from high to about a medium high because I don't want this to jiggle consistently, constantly the whole time. I want it to jiggle, take a break, jiggle, take a break. And I just know on my stove kind of where that is, but I would recommend you go to about a medium high and just monitor it until you get the desired um, rhythmic jiggling. You also don't want to lower it from say high to medium high all in one swoop. That's too drastic a temperature change. Don't do that. <laughs> Go very small in increments till you get to where you think you need to be. But I usually lower the temp on the, the knob about every 30 to 45 seconds is how I do it. Now it has not stopped jiggling yet, but it will. Okay, see how it stopped? Now it's starting back up. My high is about a number 10 on my burner, and right now it's at a six. And six is usually where I keep it. So we've got 21 minutes left, and I'll come back when the 21 minutes is done. Time's up. I'm gonna stop, turn off the burner. And all I'm gonna do is move my canner another burner that's not on very carefully. It's gonna jiggle for a little bit, but it's gonna, it's probably stopped now. Um, the pressure, there's still a lot of pressure in the canner, so do not touch anything. Don't try to take the weighted gauge off. Don't try to take the lid off. Don't try to move it around. Just leave it. You want this to come back down to zero pressure and it's gonna take about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, once we're at zero, we're gonna wait another 10 minutes and then we'll take the weighted gauge off and you're gonna to wanna to do that with a pot holder because it's very hot. Once that's off, we're gonna let it sit for another 10 minutes before we even undo the top. So for now, go about your day and just let this come to zero. So processing time is done. They are out of the canner. They are still very hot. Leave them undisturbed for about 24 hours. Then you can take the rings off, label the top of the lid, make sure you know what it is, the year and the month that you canned it so that you're using in your stash oldest 
to newest. This is just the first of what's gonna be going into our pantry this year. With the amount of green bean plants we have, I expect to can a lot more of this. Um, it's hard to see because I don't wanna pick it up, but the dragon tongue beans, when they get cooked, and they're basically being cooked during the canning process. So when it's time to actually open up a jar and eat them, you don't really have to do much. You just have to heat it on the stove for a little bit and that's it, everything is cooked. Um, but the dragon tongue beans, they don't retain their color or that beautiful variegation. They just kind of pale out a bit, but they're still delicious. Thanks for following along. I hope this was helpful. Stay healthy, stay well. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.